Hello and welcome to another video. So we got Neutral Blood, it's back with a vengeance. Not literally, but pretty entertaining. I mean, it was it's quite a fun deck, quite fast. It's a little better than I'd say Abyss was in some regards, but definitely not as the late game finisher. If you're not winning by turn six to turn eight range, you've pretty much lost the game already anyway. Also, if your board is completely demolished and your hand's pretty empty, you're also pretty screwed. But I thought, why not? Neutral Blood. Bringing it back, let's get right into some games. Okay, so our first match is against Shadow. Most of these games are pretty quick, so I expect the video to be reasonably quick overall. So don't expect this one to be super long like the last few. Although we do have a Goblin, a 2-drop, and the Phantom Cat. Phantom Cat being kind of a finisher slash a game ending card and since we had a 1 and 2 drop I wasn't too worried about dropping Phantom Cat for this game even though in most cases I normally would. We do have the Angel which is a pretty nice card I mean you can't go wrong with the Angel we also have obviously like I said the Archer so we've got our nice curve out 1 through 4 now Along with a buff, net, which normally pulls itself, but can quite often pull other really good blood cards. So we started off really solid. We literally didn't have to fight anything, which is great. I'm guessing this was a uh, Nep Shadow deck, so they're not tending to run a really high end deck. So we got the super early game, which is what kind of won this match. You want that super early game. If they're not clearing you every single turn, you will normally win. As you can tell by turn 5, we are very close to having this under our game. So we got Phantom Cat on turn 6, it's not quite early enough. We've got the... the um... A really solid amount of damage, I'm trying to think on what to say now. Um, we got the double buff net, which is really good. That's a lot of damage. Unfortunately, I did have to go with the big knuckle to kill off this 4-4. I would have been just short of going for lethal. And next turn, I've got the Phantom Cat anyway. So I wasn't really too worried. And turn 5, the worst they could really do is Cerberus, which isn't a big concern. Or maybe a Lurching Corpse, or some sort of combo that would have dealt damage, but it just wasn't enough to really worry about at that point. But we have plenty here. I mean, this Phantom Cat's going to get some good damage in. Although we had like 100 options for lethal anyway, and I just kind of wanted to go with that because I knew I could evolve the 2 1 and go for 5 anyway. Next up is Sword. I mean, Sword is a pain in the ass in most cases. But, fortunately, this deck, having enough aggro, managed to out-aggro the sword deck. I mean, anytime you've got two and three drops, you're pretty set. You don't really need anything else. As long as you've got those two drops, you can pretty much keep whatever your third card is. Fortunately, the quick blader made a little dilemma. I was pretty much forced to play a actress instead of playing Baphomet, which is what I would have preferred to have played. Although against sword, playing Baphomet probably isn't the best option anyway. We've also got the Grim Cyclone, which is great for blocking out this um, ambush. So. Why not play that out while we got the chance? Especially since we now know it is Ambush Sword, so we know kind of what to expect. And we have Alice as our follow up for a massive boost to the board, giving us some nice damage early on. These are the sort of turns you're looking for ones where you can have a couple things on board, throw stuff down, hit the face, not have to worry about them, and force them into trading into you. So they try and aim to kill off the board for the most part. They do leave up the Alice, which personally would probably be a mistake at this point. Luckily for us, we have the Baphomet, which is a nice little bit of draw power. 
and we do get the big knuckle boxer. But we're going to throw a full six damage to their face, put them very, very close to our lethal range, especially when we have a double Phantom Cat and Hector in our hand. I mean, if we get both Phantom Cats, ideal, we win. They do have to do a little bit of trading here, so... Good advantage for us. We do see the Evolve though, so we need a Phantom Cat to deal 4 damage and then our own Evolve if they don't trade that Frog to go for Lethal here. Fortunately they don't trade the Frog, I'm guessing because they don't really want to and they don't really have any other option but to go face. Luckily though, Phantom Cat's extra damage, all we need is a double neutral and we pull it. Phantom Cat is a really good card for doing things like that. And that is a pretty quick lethal. And our final quick match is Dragon. I really haven't been seeing hardly any neutral rune in this recording. Like, last couple of recordings I've done, because I normally do them in lots, I haven't really seen any this day, so... That's why we haven't had many neutral rune matchups. Not that that's really a bad thing, I mean... It's interesting. So, we've got all the two drops we could need. Dragon is a little bit of a difficult deck because they will drag your games out, making things more and more difficult. Fortunately, no turn 1 or 2 play, so we know we're in a set set there. The apart from it does pull itself though, which is kind of crappy. Could be worse, I mean, we could have absolutely just bricked our own hand and had nothing to play in the start of the game, but fortunately having stuff was a good advantage. Throwing this Angel, use all our points, I mean, turn 4, we've got a few good options, so why why use the Angel later when we can just use it now? There's Grim Cyclone thinking it's a beast, it's really not a beast. Do decide to go with the buff, just to see what else I can pull, while I have a chance. No point saving those for the later game, may as well use them in the early game. Fortunately this Evolve does trade nicely and give us a little more damage to their face. Like I said, it's not an easy matchup against Dragon. Their healing, their board clears, their just ramp in general makes things really difficult to win before they can get up really high. Fortunately Hector being available, 3 more damage and a ward. But here come the shenanigans, Sybil. Being an absolute pain in my neck every single time I have to come up against it. But we're not too far from a good play. I mean, we have our options. Big Knuckle being a good one to get rid of the Sybil. And just a easy Razory Claw to the face. I mean, we've got an extra Razory, we've got the Actress, the Lyrials, the Angel. What else do we really need? We have all our major cards in hand, excluding Alice. So Bahamut, a little bit of a problem. I mean, we know they've got it, so we know what to expect. So we've got to kind of try and play on it a little bit. So I do throw a Phantom Cat, hoping for that 4 damage. We do pull it off, throwing out the Goblin and getting a good evolve. This will hopefully force out a play on their end. And if not, it sets up a lethal. Aiming for one or the other option here. Dragon Oracle though, they go for another Cycle Hill, I'm guessing just because they know they can use it to clear both of these pretty easily without much trouble. And save that Bahamut for an actual play. We do have Grimnir, not the best card right now. I mean, we've just got to play stuff. We don't really have a choice. We need to get as much damage on this board as we can. Which is exactly why I hit face with this archer. I mean, if I can get them into 7, pretty close to lethal, I'm going to trade this, so the odds of them buff, the harmoning is very small. We've also got a razor in our hand, so all we need to do is draw another one and keep one damage on board for lethal. It's a very difficult situation. Unfortunately, Lucifer does not make it easier. But Alice 
pulling off our lethal. That's extra three damage to the board and our three in hand. Plus, since they didn't get rid of anything, it gives us an exact 11 damage lethal. I bet they did not see that coming. So, so that brings us to the end of the Return of Neutral Blood. It's a solid deck, I wouldn't say anything really bad about it. Maybe the one Skeeter could be swapped for something better, I just think it's a weird one to run one of, I guess because they're just looking for the whole like Gilgamesh and stuff synergy and the Gruff Mountaineer, which I didn't get to play with much. But it's quite fun, it's a lot more enjoyable than the previous Neutral Blood, which was a solid curve. You've got a few more options, which is nice. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, if you did hit that like button and subscribe. As always, deck list will be in the description below, and I will catch you guys next time. See ya.